Chinese internet celebrities famous for eating broadcasts are feeling the heat from authorities. That as the country responds to the leader's order on reducing food waste. Four virus experts in China were awarded with national honors, including the military officer who took over the Wuhan P4 lab and an expert who denied human-to-human -human transmission in the early stage of the outbreak. A Chinese netizen described the situation of Chinese people living within the firewall with a video. And other netizens discovered new insights from the scenes. And Chinese economists warn that Beijing needs to get prepared for the financial decoupling between China and the U.S. And Hong Kong's police credit union is moving assets to Chinese banks, citing worries over U.S. sanctions. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. A group of live streamers known as China's Big Stomach Kings are finding themselves at odds with authorities. In the regime's fight against food waste, these online stars are becoming new targets. NTD's Juliet Song reports. A niche of Chinese internet celebrities who built their fame on their enormous appetites is suffering a setback. That's because Chinese leader Xi Jinping is urging the country to stop wasting food. Major video platforms in China now say they'll punish users seen wasting food in their content. In recent years, the so-called eating broadcasts have taken the Chinese internet by storm. Live streamers who eat large amounts of food in a short time gained millions of fans. Unexpectedly, they're often young, slim women. After Xi's speech on food waste, Popular video platforms like Daoyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, said they would punish actions that waste food. The platform even added a feature that, when users search for eating broadcasts or Big Stomach Kings, would return notifications that urge the users to reject waste and eat reasonably. China state-run media, CCTV, also called out the live streamers for wasting food in their broadcasts. These live streamers are now taking a step back. Two celebrities with over 10 million fans on social media have since deleted the phrase Big Stomach King from their usernames. A live streamer who once barbecued an entire camel and with over 10 million fans on social media platforms quietly took down all of his videos. And it's not just pop culture. China's top legislative body says it's working on legislation that reduces food waste. Xi's speech raised questions over the country's food reserves. Chinese authorities said on Thursday they're getting far less wheat this year compared to last. Up until early August, authorities purchased over 40 million tons of wheat from major agricultural areas. That's an almost 20 percent drop compared to the amount of wheat purchased last year. Authorities quote, drop of wheat purchases of five major grain growing areas. This stands in contrast with local reports from the five areas which say they have plentiful harvests and that some areas have even hit historic production highs. In China, local authorities' promotion in ranks are tied to the district's economic performance. Juliet Song, NTD News. The Yangtze River's fourth wave of flooding is about to take shape. The Jialing River, one of the Yangtze River's major tributaries, is also expected to endure its first flood wave of the year. This video was captured on Wednesday. In Deyang City, inside the southwestern province of Sichuan, all available firefighters were sent out to fight the flooding. When they returned, they found their own fire station standing in water. As for the river, its water level has almost reached the bridge's platform. The torrential rains and strong flood currents were seen carrying away pieces of wood and other debris. One clip shows a young girl wading through the water to get to her home, while another shows three people standing in the water. They appear to be two parents accompanied by their daughter, who all seem at a loss for what to do. Inside the house, everything is submerged, including a motorbike, tables and beds. Another video shows the situation in Guanghan, another city inside the same province on Wednesday. There, a comparatively small flood wave battered cars parked along the street. One person was seen attempting to climb onto the car to avoid the water.
Since the end of May, flooding has raged in southern and central China. Hundreds of millions of people have felt its impacts. A netizen described how what's called the Little Pink downplayed the severity of the situation in recent months. Little Pink is the name for young Chinese people who try to protect the regime online from any and all criticism. One netizen posted online at the end of May, the water had already accumulated in some areas. Little Pink said it was just caused by heavy rain and that it would be fine after the rain stopped. In June, that water flooded earth up in the mountains, which slid down. Little Pink then ridiculed people who shared the information online. They claimed the flooding was normal for the area's rainy season. In July, authorities in some regions opened dam floodgates to release access water, effectively flooding homes and property in some regions in an effort to spare other, more wealthy areas. Little Pink praised them for their patriotism. And now in August, the floods continue. Yet people seem to have nothing to say, seemingly stunned by the situation. Now to Beijing. The rainfall in some areas in Beijing exceeded the highest level for mid-August for this city. Heavy rainfall accompanied by lightning and 7 to 9 degree short-term strong winds hit Beijing and the nearby region on Wednesday. The average rainfall in Beijing was nearly 3 inches and the average in the urban area was almost 4 inches as of Thursday morning. The maximum rainfall reached over 6 inches. At an airport, about 150 flights were canceled. A video circulating online shows pigs in China being restrained with makeshift shackles. The oddly shaped devices greatly restrict the animals' actions and prevent them from destroying the pigsty or overturn the wall that surrounds them. Two of them are not wearing the shackles, but they're as motionless as the other pigs. The netizen who shared the video online wrote, The poor pigs, sarcastically calling the pig farmers smart. He compared the animal situation to that of the Chinese people, saying the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, set up a firewall for 1.4 billion Chinese people and forbids them from escaping the wall with so-called laws. He added that despite the Communist Party's brutal treatment of its people, some sadly think China's ban on free information is a good thing, and even praised the CCP and sing for the shackles. The tweet has sparked discussion online. Another netizen wrote that the shackled pigs in the pig pen represent the real situation in China. Another user said that over time, the shackled pigs will attack those who don't wear the shackles or who resist the shackles, claiming that they threaten the pig farmer's safety and undermine the stable and beautiful life of the other pigs. Financial decoupling between the U.S. and China. The narrative was once considered crazy, but is now being taken pretty seriously and is openly discussed by Chinese officials and economists. Recent moves by the U.S. shows the administration's increasing determination to counter China. Reuters reported that the U.S. could potentially kick China out of the global dollar system. This is seen as a nuclear option that would be detrimental to any Chinese company that has international trade. But economist and former advisor for China Central Bank Ding Shuang told Reuters that Beijing has no choice but to prepare for it. He said that the threat of Sino-U.S. financial decoupling is becoming clear and present and that Beijing cannot afford to be thrown into disarray when sanctions indeed befall China. An economist of the state-backed Academy of Social Sciences, Yu Yongding, said that the U.S. has yet to use lethal tactics, including seizing China's assets in America. Beijing holds over 1 trillion yuan in U.S. government debt, but the seizure will also hurt the U.S. itself. On Wednesday, a New York Times report revealed that three top CCP leaders own at least $51 million of luxury real estate in Hong Kong. But insiders say that number is just the tip of an iceberg among CCP officials' enormous assets outside of mainland China. A well-connected Chinese publisher told Radio Free Asia that the figure was only one ten-thousandth of the wealth of the Chinese Communist Party's most powerful. He said the communist elites have far more covert ways to hide their assets. 
In an interview with NTD Sister Media, the Epic Times Hong Kong edition, Hong Kong businessman Elmer Yuan estimated the overseas wealth of CCP officials to be at least 1,000 billion U.S. dollars. The well-connected entrepreneur recently gained popularity in Hong Kong and Taiwan for his comments over current affairs. He is currently in D.C. lobbying for asylum for Hong Kong's young protesters and sanctions against CCP officials. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden told the media that Chinese officials have up to $480 billion saved in foreign accounts. The Snowden incident happened eight years ago. In the following eight years, at least another $480 billion went out of China. So altogether, $1 trillion. He said about one-tenth of that belongs to the family of former communist leader Jiang Zemin, whose allies have been in actual control of China for about 30 years following the Tiananmen Square massacre. Compared with him, Xi Jinping is nothing. To be honest, if you say Xi Jinping's family don't have any overseas assets, that's fake news. But his money is probably several digits less than Jiang Zemin. That's why he dares to start the anti-corruption movement. Yin said the Trump administration is discussing with allies on freezing CCP official assets. All transactions are made in U.S. dollars. If the amount is over 10,000, it's recorded by the U.S. government. It's very easy to check with the computer nowadays. Just put in the official's name and you'll get it. So all the transactions made by the CCP corrupt officials that are over $10,000 are all recorded. There's no way they can escape. The officials are very clear about that. So they are pretty worried about where to put their money. Local media reported that Hong Kong's police credit union is moving its $1.4 billion assets from Western banks to Chinese ones, citing concerns over potential U.S. sanctions. Hong Kong's police force have been accused of brutality and severe human rights violations during the pro-democracy movement that started last year. Last week, the Trump administration sanctioned 11 Beijing and Hong Kong officials over their suppression of their city's freedom. That includes the current and former police commissioners. Their U.S. assets were frozen. Americans and U.S. businesses are barred from dealing with the officials. The credit union allows the police force to save money and earn dividends in return. In a letter to its members, the union said it started to get prepared for sanctions in May. But it's not certain that moving to Chinese banks will ensure safety for them. Since the largest Chinese banks are reportedly already taking steps to comply with U.S. sanctions in order to safeguard their access to dollars. China's largest state-run banks operating in Hong Kong are taking steps to comply with U.S. sanctions on 11 city officials. They're trying to safeguard access to crucial dollar funding and overseas networks. Bloomberg reports that major Chinese lenders with operations in the U.S. have turned cautious on opening new accounts for the sanctioned officials. And some lenders have banned transactions via the U.S. The sanctions forbid banks from doing business with the 11 officials. Hong Kong's de facto central bank has tried to ease concerns. It said Hong Kong lenders have no obligation to follow U.S. sanctions. But J.P. Morgan analysts in Hong Kong say banks with U.S. operations may still need to consider their U.S. compliance obligations. We've all heard about the president's TikTok ban. Now Nebraska is banning TikTok on all state devices. It's the first to take state-level action against the Chinese app. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts says Nebraska is banning TikTok on all state devices because of security concerns. He said the Chinese government has long engaged in systematic covert efforts to access sensitive data from U.S. governments, companies, and individuals. As an app owned by a company based in China, TikTok is legally obligated to provide data from its users to the country's communist regime upon request. Governor Ricketts said they made the decision to maintain the security of data owned by the state of Nebraska. Nebraska appears to be the first to ban TikTok at the state level. The Pentagon and the Departments of State and Homeland Security have also ordered personnel to delete the app from government devices. Security research firm Penetrum said in a report that TikTok does an excessive amount of data harvesting. And cyber experts say the app acts as spyware for the Chinese communist regime. TikTok has denied the allegations. President Trump issued a ban on the app earlier this month, saying it has to be sold to an American company by September 15th or else it will be shut down. 
A top Justice Department official said President Trump's recent ban on Chinese social media apps TikTok and WeChat is aimed at blocking Beijing's access to large volumes of Americans' personal data that could be used for operations against the U.S. John C. Demers, Assistant Attorney General for National Security, said the U.S. is worried about the Chinese government's access to the TikTok data under their national security laws. Trump issued a ban on the app earlier this month, saying it must be sold to an American company by September 15th or else it will be shut down across the country. Demers said several massive hacks show the amount of American personal data the CCP has already collected in recent years. These include intrusions into the U.S. government's personal agency, credit reporting agency Equifax, and health insurer Anthem. The invasions resulted in the theft of personal information of tens of millions of Americans. Demer says that with that data, the CCP can use all that to paint a very effective picture of you and to think about where your vulnerabilities might be or even how best to approach you. TikTok has denied the allegations. Demers explains that WeChat, while less popular than TikTok, is used by the regime to influence and control Chinese expats in the country. One such way, Demers said, is to spread disinformation and propaganda so overseas Chinese are not polluted by ideas like liberal democracy or religious freedom. He added that more indictments against Chinese hackers will be made public in the coming months. A Wall Street Journal report this week shows that TikTok have been tracking data from millions of mobile devices that can be used to identify the user. TikTok did so without allowing users to opt out, in violation to the policies of Google's app stores. But it's not just hacking. U.S. authorities recently announced two criminal cases where residents allegedly went around U.S. export rules. They then illegally shipped restricted electronics to Hong Kong and mainland China. According to court documents in one of the cases, a California man faces charges of conspiring with a man in Hong Kong to purchase cesium atomic clocks with the intent to send them to Hong Kong without obtaining the required export licenses. Court documents say it started at the end of 2015. These types of atomic clock exports are controlled for national security and anti-terrorism reasons. Both men were charged in June 2019. According to a DOJ statement, two months later, the California man pleaded guilty. The second case involves two men from New Jersey. According to a DOJ statement, Chong Si Yu and Yun Xiu Li face multiple charges, including unlawful export of dual-use electronic components, wire fraud, bank fraud, and money laundering. Andrew Strauss, acting U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, said the two men are accused of violating U.S. export laws by sending electronic components with military applications to Hong Kong and China. According to prosecutors, they began illegally exporting electronic components from the U.S. to Hong Kong for re-export to countries including China since at least 2019 using U.S.-based company American Tecma Incorporated. If convicted, they could face up to 70 years in prison. That's as the California man could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Four virus experts have been awarded with national honors from the Chinese regime. It's an attempt to turn them into heroes and role models in China. But not a single whistleblower doctor like Li Wenliang is among them. Xi Jinping, head of the Chinese Communist Party, signed a chairman's order earlier this week awarding one person the Medal of the Republic and three others national honors. All four are virus experts. Dr. Li Wanliang and the seven other whistleblower doctors from Wuhan, who warned people online about human-to-human -human transmission of the CCP virus and later were silenced by police, were not on the list. Zhong Nanshan received the Medal of the Republic. He was the scientist that confirmed human-to-human -human transmission on January 20th, three weeks later than the whistleblowers. Wuhan began its lockdown three days after Zhong's announcement. Despite the fact that anyone in Wuhan at that time was banned from leaving, the Chinese regime didn't cut off international air travel. The virus thus found its way to countries around the world. Back in February, Zhang told the media that, quote, the epidemic first appeared in China but did not necessarily originate in China, unquote. But another Chinese virus expert publicly dismissed the claim, saying if it first appeared in China, it must have originated there. After Zhang's statement, the regime began to blame the virus on other countries, including the U.S., France, and Italy. 
But these claims lack scientific basis and are not supported by solid evidence. Italian experts were quick to refute the CCP's claim. Italy blames the Chinese regime for misleading people by using the nuances of translated information. The CCP has also blamed animals for carrying and transmitting the virus, like the pangolin from Malaysia and salmon from Norway. At the same time, the CCP continues to reject international requests for independent investigations of Wuhan's P4 lab used to research contagious diseases. The facility is located a mere 11 miles from a seafood market where the virus reportedly first appeared, according to Chinese officials. Zhong's ties to the CCP became even more obvious after an initiation ceremony for new Communist Party members back in March. During the event, Zhong led a group of frontline medical workers in vowing an oath to the party. While reciting the oath, members are made to make promises, like being ready to give everything to the party, sacrifice themselves, never betray the party, and keep the party's secrets. Outside the ceremony, Zhong has closely followed the CCP's narrative. In a June interview with state media mouthpiece CCTV, he claimed China isn't covering up the epidemic, instead vouching that the party is telling the truth. He added that the accusations made by some foreign politicians and media outlets that China is deliberately covering up the epidemic are baseless. Since the start of the pandemic, Zhang has endorsed Chinese medicine procedures three times. He claims it can be used to treat the virus. He even said that after experimenting, he has the confidence and evidence to say it really works. At the same time, Chinese authorities were strongly promoting Chinese medicine to treat the disease. Some people became suspicious that Zhang was backing the medicine's manufacturer, Ealing Pharmaceutical, for his own personal benefit. In September 2019, three months before authorities reported virus cases in China, Zhang and the Ealing company jointly set up a business. Up till now, there's no scientific evidence to support that the medicine Zhang recommends is effective. Some countries even banned imports of it over questions about its ingredients. Besides Zhang, another honor award winner, Chen Wei, was awarded the national title of People's Hero. As China's chief biological weapons defense expert, Chen is a major general in the Chinese regime's military, known as the People's Liberation Army, or PLA. She's also director of the Biological Engineering Institute at the PLA's Academy of Military Medical Sciences. She took over Wuhan's P4 lab two days after the city went under lockdown. Although the lab vehemently denies its ties to China's military, her appointment reignites questions. In 2015, Chen was selected by the CCP's National Multimillion Talent Project. The project is guided by the aim to, quote, strengthen military power through talents and technology, unquote. Reporting by Xu Wenhui, NTD News. Heavy rains drenching North Korea may have dangerous consequences, according to a U.S.-based think tank. It says satellite imagery suggests recent flooding may have damaged pump houses connected to the country's main nuclear facility. The Korean peninsula has been hammered by one of the longest rainy spells in recent history, with floods and landslides causing damage and deaths in both North and South Korea. But the heavy rainfall may pose an even greater danger. Analysts from 38 North, a website that monitors North Korea, says satellite imagery from August 6 to 11 shows the Yongbyon Nuclear Research Center's reactor cooling systems are vulnerable to extreme weather conditions. Yongbyon is home to nuclear reactors, fuel reprocessing plants, and uranium enrichment facilities that are thought to be used in the country's nuclear weapons program. The August 6 imagery, when compared to images from July 22, shows a dramatic rise in the water level of the Koryong River, which flows alongside the Yongbyon complex. The report said, quote, damage to the pumps and piping within the pump houses presents the biggest vulnerability to the reactors. If the reactors were operating, for instance, the inability to cool them would require them to be shut down, unquote. It added that although the 5-megawatt reactor doesn't appear to have been operating for some time, broken or damaged pumps would force the reactor to shut down. And that's all for today's China In Focus. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.